Alright, hey everybody and welcome to Cycling Dirt's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. This is where you come and take a few minutes out of your busy lives to get the latest dirt on all of the biggest products in the mountain bike and cyclocross world. My name is Peter and today we're taking a closer look at the Crank Brothers' best try at making a mountain bike pedal. It's called the Egg Beater 11 and it is garbage. For the next few minutes we're going to break down exactly why this is so perfectly not worth your money and wonder aloud why it's so popular. First of all, let's break it down to the basics. What is it? It's Crank Brothers' best try and highest end pedal. It's their uh, XC Race or trail riding pedal for the weight weenie. It uh, boasts a super fly weight thanks to its titanium construction and tie spindle. Everything on it is titanium except for the stainless spring. Uh, it's also super light just because of its really minimalist design it's got going on. All right. Before we jump into what's wrong with it, let's just get some basic numbers out there. First of all, four-sided entry. It's the first thing you really notice about this pedal. You can clip in on any one of the four sides. Uh, it boasts a super fly weight of 174 grams for the pair. Uh, it's got a 200 pound rider weight limit, thanks to that tie spindle. Anything over that, and it's not terribly safe. Um, boasts a five-year warranty as well, but uh, you're really going to need that. Um, and last but certainly not least, it has an MSRP of a whopping $425. Alright, so everything so far you could have found on the Crank Brothers website, but what's the dirt? I went around and I interviewed any pro mechanic and pro rider that talked to me just to get the skinny on these pedals. And the, basically what it comes down to is they're well packaged, anodized garbage. Why they're so junky, it comes down to four main points. First of all, it's durability. These pedals biggest weakness by far is how they hold up in a race or in a big ride. I talked to a bunch of people and everyone that was on them this season said they'd gone through at least four pairs already this year. It's not even August. I heard story after story of people DNFing and crashing and that sort of thing from pulling straight out of the pedal or having it just smash on itself. This is a huge issue you can see in a mountain bike pedal where durability is the name of the game. Um, if this was a road pedal, that'd be one thing, but even road pedals can take a hit or two, and they're, and they're road pedals. Second off, we've got adjustability. Every other clipless pedal worth mentioning has adjustable spring tension, meaning you can decide how easy and hard it is to get your foot in and out of that pedal. With Crank Brothers, you get one standard cookie cutter steel spring in there, and if it's not how you want your pedal set up, you're just sort of out of luck. Unfortunately, the st stock spring tension the average rider is more than capable of pulling straight out of these pedals. This has led to numerous crashes and just horror stories from a bunch of riders. I myself have a plate in my shoulder from just that happening. Alright, third of all, we've got design. These things are fundamentally flawed. Based on the fact that they have two rigid wings that control all four sides of entry and one steel spring to control all of that. What this means to the rider is that if you open up the bottom, the top opens too opposite sides open together. This is a serious bummer for any mountain biker because we're on mountains. We hit the bottom of things. You hit your pedal on the bottom, it means auto eject your foot as well and it's game over. The second huge design flaw is that these pedals rely on the pedal body itself to stabilize your foot. Again, since mountain bikers ride on mountains, the lugs on your shoe will wear down over time. And as that happens, the shoe rock is going to increase more and more side to side. And by the end of it, you barely feel like you're even connected to this tiny little leg beater. Alright, now the last thing, and another biggie, is the gigantic price tag. Even if you're Oprah rich, $425 is a hell of a lot of money to spend on a pedal, especially one with the durability of an empty beer can. Alright, well that just about sums up what we think of these here pedals. Uh, if you need any more information, you can check out the website or the mobile app for Flowcast. My name is Peter O'Donnell again. Thanks a lot for watching and tune in next time. Cheers.